Hey guys, welcome back to the Sonic Adventure Classic Mode Let's Play. And today we're going to be tackling Casinopolis. Now this level has a very unique and annoying gimmick. Apparently Sonic owes money to the mob, and uh, basically if Sonic doesn't give him 400 rings, they're going to take tails. So Sonic has to earn 400 rings from uh, basically playing pinball. I don't really know how that works, but just roll with it. So this level is basically just 10 minutes of playing pinball. <laughs> My best time for beating this level is 5 minutes and I think about 30 seconds. But unfortunately this run that I do, did now, uh, that took me 9 minutes. But don't worry, I have actually edited the video so it only takes us about, I think about 4 or 5, probably about 5 minutes in the end. Really annoying level in my honest opinion. You do get some cool effects with a pinball like this, but I don't know. It, you know, it is cool actually to see a Sonic 2 reference with uh, that particular board. We do actually have part of the level though here, and this is the sewer area. And basically whenever you fail at pinball, at least the first time anyway, uh, you get thrown down here. Now, the really worrying part about this is that if you get hit, you lose all your hard-earned rings. And you need those rings to pay off a mob. So basically you don't want to get hit, because if you get hit, you're going to have to play a lot more pinball, and your time is just going to get worse and worse. And uh, yeah, thankfully, I usually don't get hit in this level. But it is very easy to do, there is a lot of death traps in this sewer. For some reason, whoever owns this casino really doesn't like people who fail at pinball. I mean, you have to fail at pinball to actually exit the pinball, but... Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the idea behind all this is. Just a really dangerous level, basically. So be very careful, take it as slow as you can. I mean, this is one level where gotta go fast really does not help. You, they do actually design it, I mean you can see all the dash pads there, so you can go really fast. It's just really not advised. You want to get as many of these ring capsules as you can. So uh, basically, the more of these you get, the less pinball you actually have to play. And yeah, that's not knocking against pinball I should say, but I'm playing Sonic Adventure, I'm not playing pinball. So I kind of just want to play Sonic Adventure. Especially when the level takes as long as it does, and you, you've got to actually work up to a certain amount. But, uh, yeah, but there's really all there is to it. Um, up the top here you can see there is actually an invincibility capsule. So I'm trying to use the light speed attack to get that, and successfully I do. So uh, that means that I can, you know, basically not worry about any of this stuff. I just try and get the ring capsules and get the heck out of here. Sonic actually shakes off, which is kind of cute. And, uh, of course, naturally he doesn't like being in the sewer. And uh, you can actually notice right there, Tails got hurt by my invisibility. Invincibility, I should say. So, uh, yeah. So after the, sh uh, the sewers, you know, Sonic could probably use a nice shower. So he's just gonna get cleaned up there, scrub a dub dub. Again, a very nice touch, actually. And uh, Tails is not sure what he's supposed to do there. Huh? He's just running in place. But uh, unfortunately, I couldn't get Sonic to do it again. I was hoping I could get him to do it uh, while facing the camera, but unfortunately not. But very cute animation. Even though this game has a lot of problems and the cutscenes look really honestly terrible, the, the animations are not good, um, particularly to do with lip syncing and stuff like that. For some reason this game has a lot of nice touches like that, and uh, you know, more power to Sonic Team, I really do appreciate the small things like that. It's a shame they couldn't get the, uh, the bigger stuff right, but you know. Now this level is actually a Knight's Pinball level, which is really cool. Um, I have never actually played the full game of Knights, I played the demo of the HD uh, re-release, and I thought it was fun. But, uh, yeah, for anyone who is a fan of the uh, Sega Saturn Classic, well, this is uh, a cool little nod to it. You can see all the little you know, rings in the background, you've got all these cards which are different characters from the game. Um, yeah, lots of little details, it's, it's really fantastic. And the best part of all, you fly through this section here, and you emerge in the very first level from the original Knights. Now, I think it has been polished up slightly from the Sega Saturn game. The uh, the model quality looks slightly better, but uh, and Knights certainly looks better there. But uh, just a really cool reference. They really went all out on such a small little detail. But I think that's enough pinball for us, so we're just going to go and deposit our 400 rings. 
And again, a nice little touch here. I really like how they do this. Ah! Uh, <laughs> really, you know, the thing I do like about Sonic Adventure, it's, it's kind of bizarre to be honest, because it's like half the game is just focused on being fun and ridiculous, and the other half of the game is focused on being kind of this really awkward version of serious. Um, but anyway, so unfortunately we didn't get the A rank. The A rank requires you to beat the level in under five minutes, I believe. But here's actually a returning level from Sonic 3 and Knuckles. This is Ice Cap Zone, as in the same Ice Cap Zone on Angel Island. So uh, basically what happens in the game is uh, Angel Island crashes after the Master Emerald is destroyed. And um, you can kind of walk onto it a little bit. And that allows you to revisit Ice Cap Zone. Now, of course, this this looks nothing like the original Ice Cap Zone, and uh, this is honestly one of the only points in Sonic Adventure where I think the music is a bit la a bit lacking. It's mainly just atmospheric noises, um, which is a bit of a shame. I, I should actually say the music in Sonic Adventure is one of my favourite soundtracks in the entire series. It is really an incredible soundtrack, uh, very eclectic. Every kind of level has its own sort of theme and style, but I really like that personally. I, I like the fact that it's not all all rock or all uh, you know any particular style. And uh, yeah, this, this is a soundtrack that I can listen to pretty much endlessly. There's a lot of cheesy sounds, um, or rather cheesy pieces of music like um, oh what's it called, uh, Unknown from Me, which was um, Knuckles' theme song and stuff like that, but. Yeah, a lot of... every piece of music just about in this game I could listen to for ages. It's, it's just a, a really fantastic soundtrack. And uh, I, I will certainly try and point out a few favourites as we go along. Certainly, Casinopolis and... Uh, what's this? Ice Cap Zone uh, are not some of my favourites. But it is very atmospheric and it does work very well for the level. You can see actually there's a lot of uh, different paths in this level. Kind of, everything kind of crisscrosses. There's a lot of hidden ring boxes and stuff like that you can find. Which I, I do actually appreciate quite a bit. I always like it when Sonic levels are designed in this kind of more open-ended style. But, uh, <laughs> gotta be very careful not to jump into those little spikes that are protruding in and out. And, uh, if you do actually hold on to the, uh, little icicles, they will actually fall down after a short time. So you gotta keep moving as quickly as possible. I like the little ice bridge there and all that, and then use these jump panels to actually knock down this giant icicle. And I do really like that, using the, uh, the jump panels to do something crazy like that. Sonic Adventure does certainly have a few set pieces, uh, in it. well usually I guess one grand set piece in each level. This is uh, certainly something a bit different though right here. That was a uh, show of the incredible cutscene animation right there, with Sonic's face just kind of... <laughs> I don't know what happened there, it's just kind of going crazy. So Sonic has to snowboard away from this avalanche, and uh, as basically as he gets increasingly close. I have never ever been caught by the avalanche, but I believe it is possible. I uh, think I've kind of seen some you know, videos showing that it is possible. This is just one of those kind of crazy fun sequences, so then the avalanche kind of disappears, and now we're just snowboarding down the mountain through the icicles. We encounter some, egg some of Eggman's robots later on. It gets pretty crazy. But I really do love this sequence, this is a lot of fun. And a nice little throwback to the original Ice Cap Zone, which of course bege begins with Sonic, uh, you know, just snowboarding down a mountain. You couldn't actually control it in that game. I mean, you could, you could jump, but you couldn't do much. For these little yellow ramps here, you've got to press the jump button when you're on them. It feels a little bit weird, it's not just a normal jump command, it's actually kind of, you, you hold the button down a bit more and uh, Sonic does a special trick. But, uh, you know, it, it's a pretty cool little uh, system. And here we have the uh, robots, and they are going to start bombing the place. There we go. I honestly don't know if I can hit you. I've got no idea how you can run into their path. So they're pretty much just pointless, but... Oh, <laughs> I uh, forgot that actually happened. I got stuck on the little railing, I guess. Yeah, Sonic Adventure, you know, I, I, I really love the game's levels, I have a lot of fun playing it. But the game is really glitchy. Honestly, it <laughs> could use a lot more polishing, if I'm honest. Thankfully, that doesn't detract too much from the fun factor. None of the glitches are that bad. Most of the time, anyway. Certainly not Sonic 06 level. <laughs> 
but uh, yeah, almost at the end here. You can see, for some reason, we've got all these balloons here. I don't know why all this stuff, and all these windmills. I don't know why all this stuff is on uh, Knuckles Island, but... <laughs> I don't know, I, I guess uh, Knuckles has a lot of alone time, and he decided that he'd build windmills and houses and uh, basically an entire ski resort. <laughs> but in fairness to Knuckles, I mean, you know, some of the stuff in Angel Island in Sonic 3 was a little bit weird as well. Although, I mean, I guess Xandopolis, you could say it was uh, connected to the ancient echidnas. Although, I, I guess not really after this game. So, here we have to fight a new version of Chaos. Chaos uh, 4, I believe it was. And uh, be careful you don't stand still for too long, because you actually sink into the water. I don't exactly know how Sonic can stand on the water anyway, but... Who knows, video game. So, Chaos 4 is a little bit of an annoying battle. Not because it's difficult in any way, shape or form, certainly not. But, it's very random when Chaos 4 will actually let you hit him. And uh, it can take quite a while to actually defeat him. But uh, I do like the detail that whenever you hit him, all the uh, different coloured Chaos Emeralds that are inside him do actually kind of fly out and, you know, just, just like that. And they kind of hover around the water. So basically, Chaos is the water monster himself, and the Chaos Emeralds just kind of give him more power. They are the source of his power, basically. So, uh, you know, just a, a little story element here. The story, you know, as, as I've said, is presented very badly. The story is written very badly. There are some really nice details, I will say, like uh, Tails maturing into a character on his own. Um, things like, I guess, I don't know, I guess Amy becoming more independent is something that's nice. Uh, Sonic has a few nice callbacks to the classic games, like, you know, he, he says to, you know, that Knuckles is really gullible because Eggman tricked him again, referencing Sonic 3. Little things like that, which are kind of, uh, nice. But on the whole, the writing is really awkward and slow, the voice acting is really bad in English. Uh, I don't know if it's any better in Japanese, I, I would guess so, but, you know, who knows. But uh, there are actually some good ideas, though, I will say. Certainly, we do get to see a little bit of the ancient echidnas and uh, kind of how they got the Master Emerald. There's no detail or actually interesting plot there, but we do actually see a little bit of it, so the idea of that was good. The idea of a, a water monster is that you know, Eggman's trying to control. That's something different for the series, certainly. But uh, really, aside from that, there's not much. I, I do like the idea that Eggman gets a little bit more serious in some of the stories here, but I still don't really see him as attacking a city or stuff like that. He was always kind of more the cruel industrialist that hates nature rather than someone that just wants to kill people. Yeah, his thing was more about animals rather than, you know, leveling a city to build Eggman land or whatever the heck he wants to do in this game. I, it's not really explained to that great a detail. But that is the end of this part, so thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.